All right, guys, I had to do a special video here for you real quick. Chris Matthews went on Breaking Points, and Crystal and him went to war. This is an amazing video. Uh, look, in my opinion, and you guys can tell me what you think, it looks like Chris Matthews has moved further right since leaving MSNBC. I mean, he was always sort of a standard issue Democrat, but now I think he's gotten even more conservative. So again, I'll leave that to you. Let's dive into this. A lot of this stuff gets pretty heated. When you look at the numbers, though, when you look at the numbers in terms of how people are doing economically, you do have this mixed picture. I mean, the White House can rightly point to low unemployment rate, as you did. But when you look at the percentage of people who are food insecure or struggling to pay their bills, um, a trillion dollars in debt, credit card debt, we just hit that milestone yeah. as a nation. So there is real economic Well, there's people living at the there. age where they, they, they can't raise 300 bucks if they need to. You've seen these studies. Yes. Exactly. You, you can't raise 300 bucks, right? So isn't there more to the, the problems for Biden and why he's tied with Trump? Well, then, then, then there's always the going to be problems. Hmm. But you just establishes the American condition. Yeah. It's always going to be like this. Well, what an amazing attitude. This guy's a political commentator, and that's all he has to bring to the table. Well, I mean, people are struggling. Well, maybe they're always going to be struggling. Well, thank you for your, you know, uh, amazing analysis there. We really appreciate it. Tell you, Ronald Reagan got reelected in the morning in America. What's unemployment rate? What do you think his unemployment rate was? I don't know. Seven. So, I mean, they, you can't just quantify and yeah, say... But it's oh, not they... just about where people are. It's where they okay, feel they're going. Okay. And so during the pandemic, for example, you know, there were a lot of problems. There was a lot of pain. But you also had a child tax credit that was put in place that genuinely reduced child po poverty. Mm -hmm. You actually had homelessness significantly reduced okay. because you had eviction moratoriums. You had expanded access to health care. And you had actually suicides went down. Why is so Trump, why is Trump, but, why on, is Trump on, running on, even in, in Michigan? Hold on, hold on. So it is possible to improve the material condition of Americans. We've seen it throughout American history. We saw it just now in the pandemic when right, the government okay. wants to deliver. So to say, to throw up your hands and say, well, this is just the American condition. Two billion dollars, I don't think that's we're, we're running two trillion dollars in debt in full employment, which is basically full mm -hmm. employment. You can't have more expansive economic policies than that. You can't, you blow the, you blow the whole thing. You did, and it worked very well for people. Where? It worked well for lots of people who had more money in their bank account and where childhood poverty was much lower. Well, you know, so when, I, I, when was of, this, when was this? During, during the, the pandemic. pandemic. And then you also had, you know, well, during, during that, let's talk about the FDR era. I mean, we had a new deal that, you know, okay. built out the American middle class. This is the era you were growing okay. up in, right? I know you're from. Like, I, Lower I, inequality. I, I so these things are possible. You can't just say, oh, well, well this is just how it is. Spend more money. Mm. Yeah. Spend more money. And tax the rich. Oh, okay. How, how are you going to do that? You're going to tax the rich. I mean, <laughs> how, do you, how do you do that? The wealthiest among us. Who Trump runs, gave, who, who runs, Trump who runs the U.S. Congress? Trump gave them a gigantic Who runs the U.S. Congress? The wealthy. But isn't that the part of the problem? So what's your argument? My argument is... The wealthy shouldn't be wealthy, and the Democrats should be running the Congress. Well, I guess no, what's your response? Oh, my God. She, he summed it up by saying, you think the wealthy shouldn't be wealthy. No, she wants better redistributive policies and broad universal economic programs, and these are things that the majority of Americans support. And he's acting like, well, that's not possible. We can't do that. Why is it not possible? Why? Because you're afraid of big spending? That is what it is. Wait for it. And we can't do anything more? Like, right. this, this is stasis. We well, should I can tell you, like, we're, running, we're running at something that's very close to rate more inflation. Uh -huh. Very close. So what do you do? You bring up, you bring up prices. If it, it, look, demand pull. The more money you spend, the more prices go up, right? Do we agree on that? Yeah. No, I actually no. don't fully agree on no. that. Because part of what we saw coming out of the pandemic, you know, the the argument was, oh, it's just because of all the big government spending, because God forbid we give working class people a little bit of money in their pockets. At the same time, increasingly, we've seen a lot of the price increases were from corporations who decided okay. they could price gouge and okay. use the excuse okay. of inflation to lift prices significantly. Okay. Now, that was seen as a fringe theory at the time when it was first floated, like just a bunch of lefty weirdos that think this. We now have increasing evidence that that was a big part of it. We also had, coming out of the pandemic, huge supply chain disruptions that were a real problem, and also the Ukraine war contributed to that significantly. She's absolutely schooling him, and he's never heard any of this. He just thinks big government equals inflation. And so as a result of that, he's anti-big government. That's just flat out a conservative view. He's no longer even just a moderate Democrat. This is a conservative view. Say, oh, they spent money and that's what happened. I think that's a very simplistic understanding of what was going on. Well, all right. Well, <laughs> he, he was stunned into silence, man. Oh, my God. Disagree? Yeah. I, I, I argue that uh, the more gov government spending, whether government or from the private sector or investment or consumer spending, all that spending drives up prices. So in other words... He didn't hear a single word she said, and he's just like, no, spend more of uh, inflation. If you want to have less, less inflation. Okay. Um, so we sp He just said, if you want to have less inflation, you spend less. Well, I hate to tell you, Chris, this is in the Hill. Greedflation is the new inflation as corporate profits balloon. So it's not just about big government spending. This is corporate price gouging that led to the inflation on top of the supply chain, like she said. And then also, look at this. This is from Matt Stoller. Corporate profits drive 60% of inflation increases. And he's never heard any of this. He's never heard any of it. He doesn't even know what she's talking about. 
He just thinks big government equals inflation, which means he's anti-big government, which is just, again, to reiterate, flat out a conservative view. So now it gets a lot juicier. Buckle up. Progressive network overwhelmingly, and you certainly had your own point of view, that they might at least be a little bit Bernie curious, maybe a little bit, you know, inclined towards Bernie Sanders. You, know, you had this overwhelming. Bernie Sanders. Bernie who, who, who would be for Bernie Sanders? Well, I'm saying. Well, who was? That's what I'm saying is that there. Well, you are. That means you are. That you think other people should be for Bernie Sanders. Well, I'm asking no, why. You're, you're, hold on, hold on, Chris. Hold on. Let me get to a question. No, okay? you're, no because no, there's an implicit answer question. in the question. No, but let me. I haven't even gotten <sighs> to a, a question. It's a typical question. This is a cable Chris, news network. Chris, well, you're hold answering on, the question hold with on, your hold answer hold with your on. question. You had instead of you know maybe a variety of opinions or whatever, you had an overwhelming every single host just completely opposed it, completely contemptful of the movement, or uh, at times gripped by like sheer terror that he might win. Give me some examples. Hold on, hold on. Give me some examples. Okay, well, uh, you, names. Did, you did float that you might be rounded up and executed in Central Park if he won. So you also <laughs> no, made I, have, I didn't like Bernie. Made I, look, I thought Bernie Sanders, I made it very clear. I, yes. I, never, I never said anything about Hitler. But <laughs> what, what I'm... I never, I never. <laughs> he doesn't even, he's like, okay, I did say that thing about Central Park. But Hitler, I never mentioned Hitler. Hey, uh, let's let's just take a look at what uh, what went on. War, I have an attitude towards Castro. I believe if Castro and the, and, the, and the Reds had won the Cold War, there would have been executions in Central Park, and I might have been one of the ones getting executed. And certain other people would be there cheering, okay? So I have a problem with people who took the other side. I don't know who Bernie, Bernie supports over these years. I don't know what he means by social. Okay, that seems just a little bit anti-Bernie to me. Just a touch, just a smidge, just a teensy-weensy bit anti-Bernie. And then we also have this one. I'm reading last night about the fall of France in the summer of 1940. And the general, Renault calls up Churchill and says, it's over. And Churchill says, how can it be? you got the greatest army in Europe. How can it be over? He said, it's over. So I had that suppressed feeling. That was after Bernie won Nevada. That's what Chris Matthews comes out and says, comparing Bernie winning the first three contests to the Nazis taking over. So yeah, you didn't say the word Hitler, you didn't say the word Nazi, but you uh, you certainly implied or compared Bernie's campaign to the Nazis. So now he's trying to clean it up after the fact, but we know how he really feels. And the idea that he's taking issue with the fact like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. People at MSNBC were like, okay with Bernie. Nonsense, they despised him. The only one who was even slightly fair was Chris Hayes, who was Bernie curious, but overwhelmingly it was pro-Hillary, and then overwhelmingly it was pro-Biden or Buttigieg or any of the neoliberals. They don't try to gaslight us, Chris. There was, a, I believe, a Nazi comparison. No, no, I wasn't. No, did, no, no, you, no, you have float. to answer. I didn't you float it. I, that people you might be rounded up. In, but this is true. You you might be rounded up in Central Park and execute if he was president. Okay, so no, as, one, as, one no, example, no. as one example, but you have to say the overall tenor, tenor of the coverage of the network was very negative. Was that individuals making choices? Was that like was. a voice coming down from the network? Was that a problem of group it thing? Individual, individuals. It was all individuals. So at your time in the Who network. Who would have talked to him? He's not wrong. It was individuals at MSNBC, but the only reason they were hired to be in the positions they were is because they shared that same relative opinion because they're pro-moderate Democrat and neoliberalism. You're certainly in touch with the network executives who want to have, you know, look, be I, good look, with I the never, I never got a point of view taught, told to me from anybody in the executive role. So it's just happenstance that every single person at the network hated well, well, this one well, particular I don't think I, I don't... The filtering happens during the hiring decisions. So I believe them. Everybody is acting individually. Everybody is thinking for themselves, but they're all, they're only chosen to be on air because they already share those opinions. I thought when Bernie was headed toward winning in New Hampshire mm -hmm. and winning in Nevada big time, yeah. and I couldn't see even results coming in from the others, the moderates from Biden and those, right. and I got, I got concerned that they've disappeared, that they weren't even there. Because we, in the afternoon in Nevada, we didn't have any numbers coming in from anybody but Bernie. Uh -huh. Bernie was winning that thing in a, in a landslide. Right. And anybody who'd been through 1972 knew what happens when the Democratic Party goes that far left. Ugh. And if you put a person like Bernie Sanders up there, it looked to me like a, a rerun. Of 1972. McGovern. McGovern. Okay. And I saw McGovern got beaten in almost every state. And I think, and I thought that was wrong for the Democrats to do that. I thought Bernie was probably, or Elizabeth was going to win. Hmm. And uh, of course I didn't happy, I wasn't happy with either one of them. But what do you think why would I be happy so... with? Why would I be happy with people that are probably going to lose? That's your opinion. I mean, that's not what the polls were showing in terms of how he was performing in hypothetical matchup, matchups against Trump, both in 2016 and in 2020. Well, that's you're, you're allowed that's to have a, that's that an opinion. argument. No, it's no, not an, allowed opinion. To have an opinion. Uh, but I mean, it didn't match up with the polls. Well, let me just let, let me, let me tell you, you the Democratic Party got together and they basically, Jim Clyburn in South Carolina, delivered a 70% victory for, for Biden. Right. Yes. That was enough to convince the others, like uh, like Mike Bloomberg and, uh, and Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg, to withdraw. Mm -hmm. Because they saw, for whatever reason, they saw this heading and there was only one candidate that could win. Yeah. Now, 
But don't you think the media played a part of, in also convincing people like this is the guy that can win? Joe Biden is the one. And if the media controlled thing, Mario Cuomo would be president. Uh, uh, you don't think you had General Powell would be. In, the media has had favorites forever. Right. General Powell. With yeah, a, nonsense. He's downplaying it completely. Of course, that notion was pushed by the media that Biden's the only electable one. You got to get behind Biden. Like there's no other choice here, really. Of course the media helped shape that. He's trying to downplay it like that's not the case. No, that is definitely the case. You were at a network uh, and your show was beloved by many Democratic primary voters. You don't think you had any influence amongst those voters. It's it was pretty choice. clear that I wasn't. I mean, yeah. I, I think the, the people, uh, I thought the people around me were probably with Bernie. I don't think there was an, an oh, animosity. Uh, no, it's not interesting, it's true. Uh, you thought the people around you were with like Bernie? Like at the network route? Or do you mean the people who watch your show? I, I thought there was a, um, an ambivalence about Bernie winning uh -huh. and a, a sense of this is fine. That's all. Okay. No more than that. <laughs> That's definitely not true. Go check it yourself. There's compilations out there. MSNBC wall to wall anti Bernie coverage. In fact, uh, this particular video right here from Now This News, watch MSNBC melt down amid Bernie's Nevada victory. This is all the different hosts saying the same thing in unison. What he's saying is total revisionist history. They hated Bernie Sanders. And I was the one hard stricken that this is going to be a big defeat. Got it. And, uh, and, I, and I think you're wrong about thinking that uh, the middle class of the United States who, who run elections, basically, uh, we're not going to like Bernie. <laughs> God, the middle class are the only people who do like Bernie. First of all, polls show he's the most popular senator in the United States, even today. And he's been that for decades, okay? That's the first point. The second point is, Chris, just look at the polling. This is from Vox. It was during the first campaign in 2016. Much of Bernie Sanders' agenda polls well. So to raise taxes on the wealthy, 73% strongly or somewhat support raise taxes on big corporations. 66% strongly or somewhat support. Single-payer health care, 55% strongly or somewhat support. Free college, 59% strongly or somewhat support. Even when you get into the harsher rhetoric, like he wanted a political revolution. That's in this too. Look, I'll show you right here. Americans are intrigued by a political revolution. Quote, in the next decade, a political revolution might be necessary to redistribute money from the wealthiest Americans to the middle class. 54% overall support that. Even 51% of independents, 58% of people who didn't vote in 2012, 55% of Tea Party supporters, and the only people who were against a political revolution as a bloc were seniors. So P Americans agreed with him on the issues. But again, it was media indoctrination and propaganda that made them feel like, oh my God, Bernie can't be Trump and we have to defeat Trump, so let's go in the direction of Joe Biden. You assert that so confidently. Him, when, he, when you first look of all, at, he called himself a socialist, yeah, but, which on. is not going to sell I actually anywhere. agree with you that the label was No, no, not it wasn't helpful, label. But, it was his name. It's what he said. Mm -hmm. But Chris, when you look at what he actually supported, things like healthcare for all, those are popular things, right? Yeah. Living wage, $15 minimum wage, that's very popular. In fact, you know, the student debt cancellation is something that Biden has picked up and has moved Bernie forward Bernie was able to put forward uh, I thought they were very popular in Vermont, and I think he's very popular winning elections up there, and I don't think it would have solved the country. He's not basing that on anything but his own bias and his own instinct. He's not basing that on Dicky McGee's axe, man. Come on, man, get it together. Uh, so you've kind of lionized like bipartisan politics. You've written books about it, uh, Tipper and Reagan. I'm curious, do you think then, you know, we're talking here about Trump and Bernie. Don't you think those are kind of indictments of the ty those type of politics, the bipartisan uh, kind of the lionization of that, of the Lionization? Policies. Yeah. Did you read my book? Uh, no, I didn't read it. Okay. <laughs> okay, that is funny. Come on, Sagar. Don't ask that. Did you read my book? No, I didn't. <laughs> Wait, what, what, what are you talking about? Talking about the neoliberal era. I'm talking about the neoliberalism. Do you, where do you think that the populist energy around Bernie and Trump both came from? Like, what's the, what, what is this in response to? And to me, it seems to respond. I, I think I think a lot of people uh, are not happy. Yeah. Generally speaking, they they, they don't. I think there's a lot of uh, of animus about about power, mm -hmm. about uh, intellectuals or people running the show. Anything? And I think there's a lot of anger in, in working people about the Democratic Party. Do you think I it's think, justified? I think there's. Uh, Anybody that looks down on other people is a, has a problem. It's creating a problem. And so. you, you think there are elements, at least of the Democratic Party, that look down on people? What do you think? I, I think so, but well, I'm think curious so your view. I think so, too. Well, I guess um, it comes back to then, how do we get out of this? So we well, look, if, if you get, you know, you, if you want to get a really good socialist newspaper, I haven't read it, so let's find one, okay, because there isn't one. Uh, uh, because that's where... What a weird shot. <laughs> what a socialist newspaper. What are you talking about? He's pushing big government role, a lot of government responsibility, a lot of government taking, possum, taking roles, taking... I mean, Bernie at this point is basically a loyal soldier for Joe Biden. So yeah, the Bernie threat right. is completely neutralized to the extent that it ever existed. Would you say that's true? <laughs> <laughs> this 
That's amazing. He's never heard these opinions. This is crazy. He thinks, and then I got to right. think about whether that's yeah. true or not. No, I mean, it's 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 time. He's, he's neutralized. Yeah. Like, yeah. I think he's been, 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 he and Biden, I think, are on the phone a lot. Yeah. I yeah. think he supported Biden. I think he knew that Biden was the one that could win. And I think uh, he saw him winning the Democratic Party. And uh, I think the, um, uh, maybe he has a sense of history. I don't know. I, I, Bernie went, ran sort of wild liberal left-wing politics up in the Vermont and finally beat the Democratic Party. Yeah. He never joined the Democratic Party. Biden's head of the Democratic Party. Right. He has a different role. The Democrats are not socialists. They are, they're like Roosevelt. They believe in a little more government here in places like uh, uh, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. But those issues have all been joined by Trump. Trump completely agrees with leaving Social yeah. Security alone. He's, he leaves Medicare, Medicaid alone. He has gone completely against the Republican thinking about fiscal uh, austerity. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democrats have not- o Only on Social Security and Medicare. Only on those. In every other way, he's a standard Republican. His biggest legislative accomplishment was a tax cut where 83% of the benefits went to the top 1%. He's massively in favor of deregulation. He's not like, oh, he's blowing in the face of Republican orthodoxy. Sometimes in rhetoric only, and really only when it comes to um, Social Security and Medicare, because even on outsourcing, he's outsourced over 200,000 jobs under his administration. So he's sort of glossing over that a little bit there. And by the way, the idea that all the Democrats are with Roosevelt, no, I wish they were. And so does Crystal. And Bernie's the only Democrat or one of the main Democrats who still believes in that FDR mindset, the New Deal mindset. And he's very hostile to the New Deal mindset, and he'll make that even more clear. I just read this piece about new, new monetary policy. I think mm -hmm. it's wacky. Mm -hmm. They just spend all you want and print the money. Mm -hmm. print, it's in the paper today, Robert Zellick. Mm -hmm. Print all the money you want and just spend it. Biden and the student loan thing. Print the money, and I'll give it to you. Here we go. Going after the student loan debt reduction. Going after the student loan debt reduction. Here, let me show you guys a fact. Biden's student loan plan squarely targets middle class. They go on to say, the education department estimates that nearly 90% of affected borrowers earn $75,000 a year or less. I already know he's about to go in and make the argument that, oh, this is the middle class is against this. The middle class is helped by this. Where did the money come from? Well, I'm curious, what do you think- Market the, rates. What are the best, rate, market what are the rate. best and worst things that Biden has done as president, in your view? He won. Uh-huh. That was the best. <laughs> See, that's, that, that's, 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 sarc argument, that's sarcastic. Uh, no, that's a low bar. No, that's a cheat. That's fine. Right. I, think, I think infrastructure was important. I think he should have done a bigger infrastructure bill. Okay. He was just saying that this big spending leads to inflation. And now he's saying you should have done more spending on infrastructure. Uh, he's just, listen, Chris Matthews is just confused. Uh, although it may, it, it may inflate the economy again. I think it, that next year could be very bad for the economy with inflation. And... Uh, and that, hurts every, that hurts everybody. Yeah. You, you, you talk about spending sure. more money, and you have the goals for spending, but every time you spend, you're taking money uh, and inflating prices. It's just going to be, ha it is, you can talk all you want about getting rid of inflation. It's never going away as long as the money's being spent. So what about the worst? What are the worst things Biden did as president? You mentioned student loans. I think there's an old rule of Churchill's that you never promise something you can't deliver. Okay. Mm. Don't say you can give people free, uh, freedom from student loan. Oh, my God. Dead. They paid them, they made the decision. Yeah. They're getting their career opportunities out of it. The people in the middle, in the United States, the middle class and the working class in Pennsylvania who don't go to college, which is the majority of people, uh, they're not going to get those benefits. And yet you're taking them from them and saying, oh, I'm going to just inflate the economy. I'm just going to create more money, drive all the prices up to pay for student loans. Well, that was irresponsible because he couldn't do it constitutionally. He had no right to do that. Uh -huh. The courts are not going to back him on this. Yeah, because they're right wing hack courts. But under the Higher Education Act, he absolutely has the right to do it. The Secretary of Education has the authority to do whatever they want with the loans. The, the federal government holds 90% of the loans. And like I said, this helps the working class. Don't act like it doesn't help the working class. Act like the working class should be mad at it. He's bought the right-wing propaganda. He brought this up as one of the worst things Biden did, and it's one of the best things Biden did. I'm surprised he didn't also say getting out of Afghanistan was bad. People's payments are gonna be resuming very soon. Some commentators we've seen out there have been floating that we're on the verge of a civil war. You love history. No, let me, let me do it. I'm gonna get back to you because oh, this sure. argument yeah. about uh, you gotta spend more money, mm. $2 trillion <clears throat> over in full employment. We've pushed down unemployment as, as low as it's ever been able to do. This is the hardest we can ever do mm -hmm. in terms of expansionism and, 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 and social programming and everything that Biden's done. He's as probably as left as you can go. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> I Biden's as left as you can go. Oh my God. Stairs in FDR, stairs in Lyndon B. Johnson, right? I mean, it, he's, he's the uh, furthest left president of my lifetime. He's to the left of Obama. He's certainly to the left of George W. Bush and H.W. Bush and Trump and Clinton. 
But th th the idea this is as left as you can go. Oh my God, what a bleak worldview, man! Holy cow! I mean, no, the, the, mildly the, disagree. The beginning, the beginning. You start of with the premise that we live in a country we don't live in. The, no, no, no. The, be <laughs> the beginning of the administration, there was significant programs and relief. There were checks that were cut. There were pandemic era programs. It's when Biden had his highest approval rating, too. He had a 54 percent approval rating when he cut people checks and when the government was actually doing stuff for them. It's been stripped away over the course of the Biden administration. I mean, student debt payments are set to Yeah, they were for the COVID. For the COVID the unemployment super they were for COVID-19. Everything, everything that was done during that period was stripped away. So to talk, the story of the Biden administration has actually been cutting social spending over the course of administration, which is why I would argue he's in such a difficult place in terms of electorally, because people's experience have been, you know, I was doing OK. And now, you know, all of these things that were helping me, including I think the child tax credit is a perfect example. Those things have gone away. I do think inflation is an important part of that story. I just disagree with the uh, totality of the causes okay. of inflation. Right. But I think that that's the issue. But, you know, you, question, you disagree that when prices go up, it's because more money is being spent. Yes. <laughs> yes, Chris. <laughs> Please familiarize yourself with supply chain issues. Please familiarize yourself with the deleterious effects of monopolies. Please familiarize yourself with greedflation and price gouging and all the documented history of this where they're admitting it on earnings calls. He just doesn't know any of this stuff. Look, I don't blame people for instinctually thinking like the big spending is leading to the inflation because that was my initial thought as well. But then I researched more and I read more and I talked to actual economists and experts and they impressed upon me that's not it, dog. The whole thing that's going wait, on. Wait, wait, that have, that have, is what is that is economics. Even, but, but it's not that economics. Is economics. <laughs> that's what the economics textbook says. But when we look, at have, he sounds like a like a libertarian Twitter bro. Like, bro, do you even economics? You see why this where this line meets this line on the graph? Okay, that's why poor people should starve. Like, no, that's not, no, 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 no. The Textbook? Federal Reserve- what, just, what, what, what are they learning can this you, Can you let me finish here? The Federal Reserve did research showing that a significant portion, a majority of the inflation was just corporate price gouging. Executives were on calls. You don't have to take my word for it. Executives were on calls bragging about how they were able to use the excuse- She's crushing him and he has no response. Inflation no. to hike up prices. Okay. So there's an issue with monopolies. Okay. The, the last thing I really want to get from you, and this is genuine- No, I, 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 I do in the real world. And I'm telling you, if inflation rises next year and it, and it continues at the rate, it's going to hurt Biden like- uh, I believe, I, I absolutely agree, agree with that. No, no disagreement yeah, there. Yeah. So, you know, the, the era that- But you can spend covered, more money and not, and not drive up inflation. The, the era that you've covered <laughs> extensively. Yes, Chris. And by the way, oh, big spending, big spending, big spending. Has he ever said anything about cutting corporate subsidies, corporate welfare? Has he ever said anything about cutting the military budget? Which is a colossal expenditure every year. It's nearly a trillion dollars every year. No. He saves it for like all those programs that help regular people. Oh my God, we're spending too much. Do you think that that consensus failed in any meaningful respect? Do you think that consensus is broken? Are we moving towards a new era? Or do you think that it continues apace? Well, I don't think moderate uh, moderation sells huh. generally. I mean, McGovern beat Muskie. I mean, it, uh -huh. it, the fact is that if you have a wild idea. <laughs> I love how he's, he's bringing up McGovern and Muskie. <laughs> I respect it. But he's that like he's still living in the 1960s and 70s where he's like, oh, my God, the Democrats are too far left and that's why they're losing. And we all need to be like Bill Clinton. Well, we've had the Bill Clinton like Democrats for decades now. And you know what it got us? <laughs> Dickie McGee's axe, bro. It's time for a new FDR era. It's time for the end of neoliberalism. You can appeal to people who are desperate. And they're going to give you a shot. And uh, like, you know, the idea that we can continue a, a massive welfare program in addition to what we're spending now. I don't know how we can keep doing it. I just, I mean. Okay, well, how does every other developed country have universal health care? We don't have universal health care. They do. By the way, universal health care would actually save us money because right now we have an unnecessary for profit mafia middleman that's a parasite that just gets in between you and your doctor. Why? Every other country can do it. And every other country can do free college. And we can't do it. We can't do uh, paid vacation time by law. Why can't we do the things that we know work and people like? We can do it. It's this defeatist attitude, this like establishment status quo thinking. Oh my God, he's like the epitome of the MSNBC brain rot type person. There's not gonna, there's no way you're gonna raise taxes. Uh, okay, first of all, they already did. They already did. Now we have a 15% corporate minimum tax rate. It used to be corporations would get away with paying absolutely nothing sometimes. A lot of these big corporations, they get away with having a negative income tax rate where they get a net subsidy from the government. Now, finally, Biden, as part of the IRA, did a 15% corporate minimum tax rate. Yes, we should do more than that. We should raise the capital gains rate. We should raise uh, the rate for the um, top marginal earners. Of course, of course. Now, he's right that now we're not going to be able to do that because the Republicans, they control um, you know, one of the branches or excuse me, not one of the branches, they control the House. 
so we can't do it now, but we already did it. But if we have Democrats, maybe we will be able to raise taxes on the wealthy just a little more. You know how you can raise taxes with a Republican Congress right now? And in, in effect, even the Senate's not going to do it. Right. Yeah, I mean. So where are you going to do it? What government are you going to have? You're talking about the United States government? But do you think that there were core failures? To get back to this question of like, <laughs> where does the populist energy around Trump and around Bernie, where does this come from? And is it rooted in some key failures of that bipartisan consensus, the overlap between basically Bill Clinton and Ronald Reagan? You know, you have this, consensus in, and, 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 you have this consensus in favor of deregulation. You have the Iraq war. Free trade, you have yeah. free trade. You have all of these things that build up to the financial crash. I mean, aren't these key failures of neoliberalism that now you have these movements in reaction to, movements that you, you know, very much don't support? Don't support what? You don't support the populist movements like Trump. Like Trump Bernie. or Bernie. Yeah. Yeah. Were there, were there failures in that? Trump or Bernie? Were there, okay, were there, there's a different, no, they're wildly different, but talking about the animating energy here, were there key failures in that neoliberal consensus that has dominated here for some 40 years? I don't know. You don't I know? Mean, I don't know. <laughs> this is where <laughs> it's amazing. He's a political commentator. He's done this his whole life. He doesn't know. I don't even know if he grasps the question. I don't even know if he understands the question. I don't even know if he knows what the neoliberal era is. He seems confused. Like, why would you put Reagan and Bill Clinton together? I don't understand. They're different people. Why would you lump Trump and Bernie together? He literally doesn't get the gist of the question. He doesn't understand that there is this thing called the neoliberal era and that it seems like it's either in crisis or we're coming to the end of it or they're going to plow through and continue it. He's just like, I don't even know what you're saying. I, this argument is just, I'm arguing with someone who has no interest. I'm not, in, I'm not in trying to argue. I really Tell me know, where the states no, are really that Bernie know. people win. No, no, no. Tell I me really the want, states that are Chris, for your point of view, Chris. because you're ad, you're advocating here. You're, yeah, you're no, pretending no. to interview me, yeah. but you're really advocating for a social welfare state. And I'm well, going to ask you, where 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 is it winning? First of all, anytime you put these things on a direct ballot, these ideas win. That's not debatable. Not even close. Second of all, there are plenty of these people around the country that have popped up, whether at the state level, the local level, somebody like John Fetterman, who can't even talk and beat Dr. Oz and represents a Bernie type ideology. Sherrod Brown in Ohio is very close to Bernie Sanders. That's a red dominated state. It's like a, a Trump plus six or plus eight state. And Sherrod Brown continuously wins over there. Now you got Tim Waltz in Minnesota, who's super based and doing awesome lefty lefty policies and ideas, and he's incredibly popular. So what are you talking about? Oh, yeah, oh, oh can't win, can't win, can't win. FDR's our prime example of this, and he won four presidential elections, and he held 80% of the House and 80% of the Senate. Don't tell me it can't win. As a $15 no, minimum wait, 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 no, 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 You're jumping but, around. Chris, you're I, I'm not trying to argue with you about yeah. Bernie anymore. I'm no, trying to ask you what you really think about the era that you covered and whether it's coming to a close or whether you think that, coming you know, the lead, do you think it's coming to a close? Do you think it served people well? Do you think there were any failures to it? Anything that should have been done differently okay, during let, that era? Can I speak? Yeah, please. please. Go ahead. I think the Democratic Party, uh, the modern Democratic Party, has been uh, very good at opposing the Vietnam War. And, um, and most of it, not at the top. The modern Democratic Party has been good at opposing the Vietnam War? Is very good at opposing the Iraq War. And these are real conditions where people... The Democratic Party was good at opposing the Iraq War. We're still in Iraq. Oh my God. Killed, and we killed yeah. 200,000 people in Iraq. True. In Vietnam, 58 million people, 58,000 people died from our country and millions of Vietnamese. And we made True. those decisions on civil rights, starting with the Brown case in 54 mm -hmm. and, the, 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 and the civil rights bill in 64 and the voting rights in 65 and all those issues, social issues, the Democratic Party with Republican support in many cases, Midwestern Republicans were very big on civil rights. Uh, certainly, that's when we had a Northeastern Republican Party, mm -hmm. establishment party. And I think in all those issues, the, the, the Democrats did the right thing. And even when I thought Roe v. Wade was a brilliant decision, because I think even though it was political and it wasn't really a court decision, it was a practical decision. Mm -hmm. the, the old so he didn't really answer the question about the neoliberal era, but we're getting a sense he's like, I'm pro the Democratic Party and standard Democrats. That's the sense I'm getting here was that the Supreme Court follows the elections right. and they, and they yeah. did what makes sense and viability made sense. I agree with that. Uh, and so we moved, we've made a lot of decisions. In terms of unemployment, uh, the Democratic Party has, under Clinton, uh, balanced the budgets, uh, which I thought was important uh, under Harry Truman, balanced the budgets. Uh, I think they've tried to do uh, fiscally responsible stuff. Uh, they have uh, maintained at enormous cost, Medicare, Medicare, and Social Security, which are incredibly difficult and expensive. They've done all those programs for retirees. Uh, I think they've, uh, they've been probably in terms of homelessness and reality is on the street, not this, the world you talk about, that world I don't know anything about. But in the reality of the streets, where you walk in San Francisco and you see the, the liberalism, it is liberalism. It's not left wing, it's liberal attitudes towards people living in the streets. Uh, the graffiti, the, actually the deterioration of a lot of downtown San Francisco. I think they've been probably too liberal. So he just links like homelessness with liberalism or, you know, a left wing ideology or something. No, what is the answer from the left on stuff like that? Give everybody a house. 
put a roof over everybody's head. You know, housing first. It's not that difficult. Also, we've seen programs around UBI where people, guess what? They immediately uh, pay for a roof over their head and get groceries and pay the bills when you give them money. It's not like they immediately go and spend it on like alcohol or drugs. Or, uh, oh my God, Chris, you're killing me. Further in that direction, you're, it's, it's, it's almost zany. Now, just a minute. I'm getting the talk here because I live in the real world where people like uh, <laughs> Gavin Newsom can get elected and Jerry Brown can get elected four times. And uh, people that are moderate Democrats, or you call them uh, neoliberals, they are neoliberals because they're trying to do something. They're not mm -hmm. socialists. They don't believe in the government taking over things. They know that at some point the government gets too big and it's the problem. And they, do, they don't believe in all these solutions like you, you're advocating. And, you, and thank God there is no Bernie trade. Sanders running the country. Thank think? God. No, just He's got Bernie derangement syndrome. He has Bernie derangement syndrome. He can't stop talking about Bernie. When I heard all the points, I heard them what? all my life, and all those <laughs> arguments you, would, be defeat, would mean defeat. The real world Absolute defeat. That you're, you know, places the that real world. The real world. I know about. I'm, I'm, did I had free two, trade, to, sir. The, let me the just say, I have a couple of brothers who voted for Trump this time. Yeah. Probably mm -hmm. will again. I've got people, and, and, and I have relatives I will not even argue with because they disagree with me. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more people on the other side than from your side. Seventy-three percent raise taxes on the wealthy. Sixty-six percent raise taxes on big corporations. Fifty-five percent in favor of single-payer health care. Fifty-nine percent in favor of free college. You have like 70 or 80% that want a $15 minimum wage now. It's even a majority for a $20 minimum wage now. Unions are polling it, it, higher than they ever have ever. You know, oh, people are not with you, Crystal. Actually, people are definitely with her. And they find you uh, to have establishment brain worms. Probably in the latest polling in Pennsylvania, he's one point ahead. Yep. In, uh, in uh, Michigan, he's even. Uh, Virginia, he's running even. I think he's probably going to pick up a couple points in the next few weeks. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, because every time the courts go after Trump every time the prosecutors go after Trump. Every time they go after Trump, and they're all right in these cases, I believe completely right, his microphone gets bigger. Mm -hmm. It's louder because if you attack somebody, they have a right to respond. That's the key thing. When America is, if you're under attack, for whatever reason, you get to talk and you get a lot of opportunity. So he's going to have, I don't think he'll go to this, this uh, debate this week. I think he's probably going to win. Is he arguing that like Trump's 91 criminal charges makes him more popular? Because that is only true in the Republican primary. And even that, it's more like leveled out and stopped at a certain number. In the general election, he goes down every time he gets indicted. Outside, he may even get arrested during that time. He may do anything. But he's not going to let their, let Chris Christie grab the front page of the New York Times away from him. Because right. all will be is Christie attack him. And he's the liberal pinup boy right now. You'll hear about <laughs> a lot on MSNBC and true. CNN. You'll hear a lot of him because he's the liberal pinup boy. He's their guy. And they know he doesn't have a chance in the world of beating Trump. Right. Just like Bernie Sanders does in the world of beating anybody. Anybody. That's not what the outside. poll said. But what, what poll? Give me the poll. There were all kinds no, of No, give me one. Just there give me one now in real time. No, you're not looking look them up. You can Tell go me the poll. No, give me one poll. Hillary. Oh, just... God. Okay. You want one poll? How about I give you multiple? So this was uh, during the Biden race. This wasn't even during the Hillary one where Bernie was up even more on Trump. But look at this. Bernie, 48. Trump, 42. That one is from Yahoo and YouGov. Bernie, 49. Trump, 42. That one's from Fox News. Bernie, 47. Trump, 44. That's from CBS News and YouGov. Bernie, 51. Trump, 45. That's from ABC News and Washington Post. Bernie, 51. Trump, 49. That is from Emerson. Bernie, 50. Trump, 46. NBC News, Wall Street Journal. Bernie, 48. Trump, 45. That's from NPR, PBS, and Marist. He doesn't see it because he doesn't want to see it. Every poll has... I don't know if I've ever seen a poll with Trump ahead of Bernie. And he's totally clueless about this. Okay, I'm checking you on your basic ask, idea. Right, your, well, your, no, right, you, have the, you, you have the platform here. How did Hillary Clinton do you have the platform. Trump? Hillary Clinton was the electable one. How did that go? How did she do it beating oh, Trump? What is that? This is, the, this is called whataboutism. No, this, no, this, no, no. You're making a case about who would have won. I can tell you who didn't win. Hillary Clinton didn't win. <laughs> Get him. Yeah, and that was the person who at that time... Oh, Your well, network it's my, anointed my, I, as I'm, this was the, was this is the one who's Clinton. electable. Okay. I was pushing Hillary okay, Clinton. Okay. 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 I was pushing Hillary Clinton as a candidate. I, I, I'm going to be respectful. I like Sherrod Brown. I like people like that. Yeah. I like uh, some Sherrod Brown is more like Bernie than like Hillary or Biden. He does this whole spiel, and then he picks Sherrod Brown, who's more like Bernie than he is like Biden. Oh my God, he's just look. Chris Matthews is just confused. He has some conservative beliefs. He has some moderate centrist neoliberal Democrat beliefs, and then he randomly throws support for Sherrod Brown. Uh, I, he's against the student loan debt reduction, but then he's also in favor of a bigger infrastructure bill. The main takeaway here is Chris Matthews is confused. Left because, they, because they have an ability to talk to people the way they live, okay. and not this, this, this performance. Well, Sharon and Bernie by, have some uh, labor supporting. Uh, I, I don't. 
Well, look, you have a point of view, and you've run to this table, and, and I'm trying to defend against it. I'm yeah, just saying the more moderate right. course can yeah. win. Yeah. The moderate course can win. And Biden uh, has made a lot of compromises with Ron Klain. He's certainly moved over to the left. There's no doubt about it. Uh -huh. He got rid of the Hyde Amendment. He tried to. You're not going to get rid of it. But he, these kinds of decisions. Uh, you know, he was for busing. Most people were uh, against right. busing, rather. And, and, <laughs> busing? <laughs> and he's had to pay for all these sins of the past. I, I personally think it's it's... It's a strange argument. To I don't think you could win it as a ward leader anywhere. You know? my, my last I think, question. I think, I think you, you, you don't you, you've to, made that clear. Yeah, no, 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 just where, where, would you, where, would you, where would you want to be the board, board leader, the political boss? Where can you be a good board leader? Well, no, with your point of view. Oh, with my point of view? Yeah, where would you go with that? Where well, would you I mean, a, I support populist economics. No, no, where, no, 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 where, where, no, no. Tell me where you would win. I'm not looking to be a ward leader anywhere, Chris Nunn. Where are you going to win? I'm happy to be Where are you going to win with this argument? Well, obviously, it hasn't won in a Democratic primary, especially given the fact that, you know, I think Democratic voters are very concerned about electability, and I get that from a perspective. But my view is the media really shaped and informed those Democratic primary voters of who was actually electable uh, and who just, wasn't. That's right. And again, FDR is the prime example. He's the most dominant political figure in American history, and he represents what we represent. The New Deal, you know, having social democracy. 80% of the House, 80% of the Senate won four presidential elections. It's all the evidence you need. That's uh, tried and true. It is tested. If you had figures like that today, yes, they're going to dominate. Yes, they're going to do well. But he's living in the world where Hillary won and Biden won. And uh, so therefore, only moderates can win ever, forever, forever in perpetuity. Oh, it's so dumb. Uh, that was an opinion. If, if, if that way, let me just say this. If I, had, if I had wielded this kind of power in my role for 26 years, I would have felt it. I never felt it. Okay. I felt I was up against the left and I had to argue with them. I felt I had to, take, I had to challenge people like Hillary, Hillary included. I think the... Uh, the idea that, that Hillary was too conservative for the country is ridiculous. <laughs> she was, uh, she orchestrated the overthrowing of Libya. She was for the Iraq war. She was for NAFTA, for the Patriot Act. Down the line, she was a pretty conservative Democrat. That's what she was. And here he is saying, oh, I viewed my role my whole career as fighting against the left. Well, thank you, Chris Matthews. Thank you for admitting you're as bad as we thought you were, or if anything, listening to this interview, I think he was hiding his power level when on MSNBC. I think he was way more conservative than he was even letting on on air at MSNBC. And at MSNBC, he was a supporter of the moderate Democrats. So anyway, we don't need to watch through any more of this, but go watch the whole interview. I know we watched a lot here, but there's a lot more. Uh, I think Crystal did a phenomenal job. And yet again, I'll say, I think Chris Matthews is very, very confused. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.